What is happening guys? It's Spruce Goose here and today I want to go over defensive adjustments. There's a ton of defensive adjustments in Madden 21 and a lot of people don't really know about all those adjustments or at least don't utilize them as effectively as they could. So I want to go over everything from the most basic beginner stuff to the most advanced high level stuff in terms of defensive adjustments. We're gonna look at all of it and hopefully you guys will learn something today. Now we've got the face cam over in the lower right today instead of the lower left because those adjustments menus that we do pre-snap, they're all gonna be in the lower left. So I want you guys to be able to see what we're doing as I talk through it. So there's a ton of defenses out there that you can run and I'm not gonna tell you in this video which defense I think you should be running. I will tell you that I have been running nickel 335 wide, uh, mostly coming out in Mike Blitz zero, but then maybe throwing in a cover two man or a cover three buzz or a Mike Blitz three, a cover four show two. There's a lot of options, but I mostly have been basing everything out of Mike Blitz zero. So that's what I'm gonna come out in uh, for this video. But again, the point is not the particular defense. It's mainly the adjustments that we can do pre-snap. Uh, and so the other thing I want you guys to remember is you can sub in other players. I know this is very simple for some of you, but if you don't know, you can press RB or R1 and it pulls up the substitutions menu. And so in this case, uh, with nickel 335 wide, at the middle linebacker spot, I always sub in a safety, preferably uh, whoever the fastest safety is on my team who's available because safeties get much, much better uh, interception animations than linebackers. Uh, linebackers just aren't in a great spot this year. Uh, if you're gonna be uh, using someone in the middle, I definitely recommend it be a safety because they're just gonna be so much better for using, so much better change of direction and get way better interception animations. So go ahead and get a safety in the middle for your user. If you're using in the middle, if you're using somewhere else, then don't worry about it. Uh, other things that we should do is before we even jump into a play, go over to coaching adjustments. Some people never mess around with this and there's a lot of powerful stuff in here. Now, I will say when I start off a game, I kind of just leave everything on default and kind of get a feel for how my opponent is playing and adjust accordingly. Some people have certain settings that they automatically do no matter what, and that's fine too. Uh, if there's one that I always put on, I usually put play in uh, play ball for ball and air defense. And then for option defense, I play conservative pretty much every time. I, I don't really know of a situation where I ever uh, am not playing on both of those. But everything outside of that, uh, you know, auto alignment, there's certain schemes that might be based out of base alignment or man alignment. I just leave it on default. I usually have uh, auto flip off. Uh, cornerback matchups, some people like to match by speed, uh, which is a really good way to prevent uh, the man switch glitch that's going on right now that I actually made a TikTok on uh, last week. But you can actually have your zones glitched out by match by speed if you're not careful. So that's why I usually stick in balanced. Uh, and then if, if I see it, they're not really trying to exploit any uh, any switch glitches uh, by motioning their guys back and forth, then I might go to a match by speed or something. But I usually start off with balanced and just see how they're playing. Uh, strip ball, definitely keep that on balanced because if you put that on aggressive, you'll get... Uh, some face mask calls, uh, tackling I leave on balance unless it's maybe the end of the game and you're just praying for a, a hit stick fumble or something. These three guys at the bottom, the zone drop flats, the zone drop curl flats, and the zone drop hooks have a lot of power. So when you change it to anything that's not default, you can see it actually says that it overrides the drop depth for, in this case, hard flats, cloud flats, and soft squat zones. Those are the light blues that you'll see on the field. Uh, down here, it overrides the drop depth for curl flats, quarter flats, and seam flats. Those are your purple zones that you'll typically be seeing. And then hooks are gonna be you know, your hook curls, your three wex, your middle reads, and your vert hooks. Those are your yellows. And so uh, typically to start, I leave it on default. If I change it to anything, curl flats will probably go to 25. And then flats will go to maybe five or 10, depending on how my opponent is playing again. That's probably gonna be the biggest takeaway from this video, guys, is there is not one size fits all defensive scheme. It's not like I can say, run these adjustments and you will stop your opponent every single time, every single game. It doesn't work like that. Uh, just like in real football, we have to adjust, we have to adapt. It's kind of a chess match out on the field. You have to try and anticipate 
what your opponent is trying to do and study their tendencies and utilize all these tools available to you uh, to try and stop what you think they're gonna run. But this right here, curl flash at 25 usually is a pretty safe spot to start. Uh, sometimes it ends up being too deep and I drop those down to 20. Uh, sometimes I'll leave that 25 and maybe they're getting over uh, the, the uh, zone drop flats for the blues and I maybe bump it up to 10. Um, you will see some people that actually prefer to flip these. They prefer to make their blues drop deep, maybe a 25, and their purples drop short to 5 or 10. Uh, that is something that I haven't experimented with yet, but some people believe that uh, the blues will actually uh, play the deep zones a little better than the purples, which honestly, now that I think about it, I should try it out in a game sometime because I've been a little bit frustrated with how my purples play uh, at like 25 or 30 yard depths. So that's something to keep in mind, but if you don't feel like experimenting, the, the standard thing is probably to do something like this, five or 10 on the blues, 25 on the curl flats, and adjust accordingly. So that's pretty much it for coaching adjustments. Let's hop over to the actual pre-snap adjustments. So I'm gonna come out in nickel, 335 wide, Mike Blitz zero. We've already subbed in our safety uh, for this middle linebacker right here. So we got a little bit of extra speed. Uh, so let's do Mike Blitz zero. And on offense, I'm just gonna you know, do it. They have a bunch in here. I'm sure they have a, a bunch. Everyone's got a bunch. Uh, let's just put them on, on mesh spot or something. It doesn't really matter because we're gonna be not hiking the ball very much for the offense. Uh, but here we are, pre-snap. And let's just go through some of the really basic adjustments first. So the simplest thing to start with is the coverage adjustments. So if we press wire triangle, it's gonna pull up our coverage adjustments menu. And if you look on the left side, we'll see all the different options on the left stick. And so if I press down on the left stick, you will see that it is going to press all the corners. And you know, it's pretty straightforward. Anyone who is lined up on the line of scrimmage will get pressed as they try to release off the line to run their route. And so if you've got a superstar wide receiver with maybe route technician abilities on them or a great release rating, they're going to have a very high chance of beating that press coverage. So that's something to keep in mind if you're gonna press. Now someone who's lined up off the line scrimmage, like our tight end in this case, uh, it's gonna be a little tougher for them to press him because he's got that gap between the defender and where he's lined up. And so you can sometimes still press him, but it's a lot tougher and I don't think you can press him every single time. So just, just keep that in mind if you're trying to utilize press. Uh, now the next adjustment on the coverage adjustments is to push the left stick up and that's going to give cushion. And again, this is exactly like it sounds. Uh, you're just gonna back all your defenders off. I don't use this very often. If my opponent was in like a third and 30 or something or a fourth and 30, then maybe I would. But for the most part, uh, I prefer to do press and shade over top. And we'll look at shade over the top in just a second. So it's it's very situational when you would wanna use this. I'd say most of the time you're not gonna want to do that because you're gonna give up so much stuff underneath uh, for completely free if you don't use her in the middle really well. So I don't recommend doing give cushion a whole lot, but it is an option you have if needed. Uh, so then we've got two more uh, options on the left stick. We've got left stick to the left, which is show blitz. So as you can see, it's gonna bring everybody up. It's a little different than press. We're not actually pressing, even though uh, you know press did bring people up. Show blitz is bringing the defenders even more up and you can utilize that to, you know, as it would imply, fake as if you're gonna blitz, even if you're not going to. Now, in this case, uh, we are blitzing, so uh, you know, this is just gonna help get our defenders, you know, closer to the line at the snap. Uh, but again, it, it's a tool that you've got. I don't really utilize show blitz very often, but say you think uh, your opponent's gonna be running the ball, you could use show blitz to get all your defenders up to the line uh, to try and you know, stop them for a short gain or no gain. Uh, the final adjustment we have is going to be left stick to the left, which is base align. And so what base align does is it lines your defenders up completely independent of where the other team is lined up. It is the base alignment for that formation. So regardless of whether they have a bunch or a trips or whether they're in goal line or whatever, base align, uh, they should line up exactly the same way. They line up independent of how the offense is lined up. And you can utilize 
face aligned sometimes to kind of disguise what coverage you're in because if you are in a man coverage and say you're in trips, it can be very obvious when all your guys are lined up you know, in front of their man, it can be very obvious that you're in man coverage. Whereas base align, and you remember, there's an option in coaching adjustments to actually come out in base align. If you come out in base align, it can kind of disguise whether you're in man coverage or zone coverage, because there's no way to know you're gonna be in the base alignment every time. I don't really utilize it, but again, it's an option. The whole point of this video is there's all these tools at your disposal and you know, your personal play style is gonna determine how you use these tools. And I'm just trying to help you guys uh, understand what all these tools do. But that was the coverage adjustments for the left stick. If we press wire triangle and look at the right side of our coverage adjustments panel, we see that we have over top, underneath, outside and inside. And guys, this is shading. And this year, shading is really important. So one of the most common ways to play man coverage right now uh, for pretty much the whole year of Madden 21 so far is to press, so cover, you know, cover adjustments, wire triangle, and down on the left stick, and then shade over top, wire triangle, up on the right stick. And now you won't see them uh, adjust. You won't see any reaction when you shade over top, but you just have to trust that it has been applied. And what coverage shaded over top is going to do, as the name would imply, is they're going to guard against anything deep over the top. They're going to play really great coverage against streaks and fades and any deep routes and maybe not play as well against underneath routes like slants and drags and things like that, even though they still play those somewhat decently well depending on how good the corner is. Uh, shade over top is the best way to make sure you don't get burned for an easy touchdown over the top. It's still possible, especially if there's a big speed difference between their wide receiver and your cornerback, but shading over top does a pretty good job of guarding against deep routes. Now the rest of the shading is used very, very situationally. I'd say most of the time I'm shading over the top, but very situationally I will shade underneath. And there's really two scenarios. The first scenario is if I'm playing a cover two man, then what I will do is I will press and I will shade underneath. And the reason I'm shading underneath is because I'm not too worried about getting beat over the top because I've got two deep safeties to help out with that. And then shading under underneath means we're gonna play much better against all those underneath routes. And we shouldn't uh, be giving up anything short very easily. So if they want to beat this coverage, they're really gonna have to try and fit something in there uh, over the cornerback, but under the safety or to the side of the safety. And that's not an easy thing to do. It's obviously possible, but not very easy. So that is one scenario where I use shade underneath. And the other situation is if I'm in the red zone uh, on like on defense, like my opponent is coming in to score, I will go ahead and play man coverage and just shade underneath because I'm not too worried about being beat deep because there's not really enough yardage for them to throw it deep. If there's only 15 or 20 yards of space, uh, they're really not going to get enough separation if they run a streak or something uh, for me to worry about not shading over the top. So I will shade underneath because everyone in the red zone is going to be running slants, outs, posts, things like that, and the shade underneath will cover it much better. So those are the times that I use shade underneath. Now, the other two options are shade inside and shade outside. So when I hit shade inside, uh, sometimes you'll see a cornerback adjust. Uh, it looks like Oh, let me let me make sure I get back in a, a man coverage. So I'm shading inside and shading outside. So in this case, they're not reacting. Sometimes you will see um, the cornerbacks react a little bit when you shade inside or shade outside. I don't really know if it works that well. I think there's been a lot of times where I'm like, this guy loves throwing a slant to this particular receiver. Let me press and shade inside. And even though I shaded inside, his receiver still beat me inside anyway. Uh, so I don't know how well shading inside works. Uh, I think shading outside might work a little bit better if you know your opponent is throwing a lot of, uh, you know, maybe out routes or corner routes and you're getting beat on those. Uh, try shading outside. It's not amazing, but it, it should help them play that route a little bit better than not using it. Again, it's far from perfect. I really wish the shading inside and outside worked a little better. I wish it was like, if I'm gonna shade inside, then I'm definitely gonna guard the inside. 
and leave the outside wide open. Like that's a risk I'd be willing to take. Uh, it's very frustrating to shade inside and then still get beat inside anyway, but that's just the way the game is right now. There's nothing we can do about it. Uh, but so you can use the shading very occasionally. If you look at the bottom, there are four other options that we have at our disposal. The first one on the right side is mana line. And so if I go ahead and hit RB or R1, as you can see, uh, this is gonna be the opposite of baseline. Whereas baseline, we're gonna come out in coverage independent of the offensive formation. Mana line means we're gonna line up as if we're in man coverage, basically, even if we might not be. So this is a great way to throw off your opponents if you want to play zone coverage, but have them think you're in man coverage because when they come out of the huddle, they will see uh, your defenders all matched up with a person on the offense and they'll say, oh, it's man coverage. And then they snap the ball and it turns out to be zone. So, you know, it's kind of the opposite where with base align, you could play man coverage, but base align, they could assume it's zone. Then they hike the ball and it's man coverage. So these are just different tools, once again, to disguise your defense. And once again, back in coverage adjustments, there's the option to always come out of the huddle in mana line or baseline or default. It's completely up to you how you want to play your defense. But again, these are all the tools at your disposal. Going through uh, the rest of these, we have play the sticks, which is the LB or L1 option. And I'll be honest, guys. I don't know entirely what Play the Sticks does. I'm not sure anyone truly knows. In theory, and somewhat in practice, uh, the Sticks is the first down line. So if you think that your opponent is just trying to get the first down, they're not worried about throwing deep or anything, you can put on Play the Sticks and your defense will stay near the first down line. It can be very risky because if you play the Sticks and they do throw it deep, uh, you know, you might not have anyone back there covered because you told your defense to play the sticks. So in so in principle, it sounds simple enough. They're going to play the first down line. But also, some people believe that playing the sticks actually makes zones play better. Like, regardless of where the sticks are, that zones will simply play better. I don't really use play sticks. I probably should. This is probably one of the things that I definitely want to implement in my game more situationally because you are still introducing some major risk if you hit play the sticks on say a third and one or fourth and one and your opponent ends up throwing it deep but playing the sticks is something that if anyone has any insight on what it actually does in addition to playing the first down line if it actually makes coverage better or you know, anything better beyond just the position of where the defense plays, please let me know in the comments below because I'd love to learn something new from you guys. Uh, but that is what sticks means at that LB or L1 option. Now there are two more options on the coverage adjustments menu, but I want to come back to those because those are getting into more of the individual player assignments, which gets a little bit more advanced. So we will come back to these, uh, but for the sake of simplicity, I want to kind of go in order of simplest to most complex. So we will come back to what A and Y do, the individual and quick adjust do uh, in a later part of the video. But next, let's talk about the defensive line adjustments. To pull up the defensive line adjustments, you're gonna press left on the D-pad and it's gonna pull up more options for us. And these are pretty simple. If you look at the left side, you can see left on the left stick is how we can shift our D-line to the left. Right on the left stick moves them to the right. Up will spread them. Down will pinch them. Uh, pretty straightforward. And on the right side for point of attack, the slanting them inside and outside is just the direction that they're gonna crash. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of uh, spy a couple of these guys. So this is only going to affect the actual down linemen. So I only have three down linemen right here. So if I slant inside, you can see now they're all kind of going inside. If I slant outside, uh, once again, they're, they're spreading to the outside, slant. Oh, I kind of, I did the wrong thing. If I slant them to the left, you can see now the three D linemen are going to the left. If I slant them to the right, they are going to the right. So it, it's that simple. That is what we're doing uh, with the defensive line adjustments. So those are pretty straightforward and we can do the exact same thing with the linebackers. We just press right on the D-pad and now you can see we have all the same options as we did for the defensive linemen, at least on the left side. So we can spread the, the linebackers, we can pinch the linebackers, we can move them to the right, we can move them to the left. Now, if you look at the right side, this is a little bit different. 
this there's a lot more power on the right stick for the linebackers than we had with the D linemen. Like slanting inside, outside, left, right, it can be useful. And there's a couple, you know, really good blitzes. Like my user rush out of Mike Blitz Zero, uh, which I talked about in another video, actually utilizes uh, slanting the D line outside to kind of free up gaps in the O line for you to shoot through. So that's powerful right there. But if you look at these adjustments for linebackers on the right side. If I hit up on the right stick, it says zone all linebackers. I'm gonna hit up on the right stick, and all of a sudden, those two outside linebackers, and really, let me uh, let me click on a safety or something. So let me, let me do it again. I hit zone all linebackers, and now all three of those linebackers, the two uh, on the outside and the one in the middle, have all been put into zones. If I hit right on the right stick, and then, oh, sorry. If I hit if I hit right on the D-pad and then right on the left stick, now just the uh, outside linebacker, it's, it's, he's the left outside linebacker, but from this perspective, he's lined up on the right side. So if you look at the linebacker, from our view on the right side, he is now blitzing. And if we do right on the D-pad and then right on the right stick, now the linebacker on the left side is blitzing. And if we do, uh, let's put them all in the zones again real quick. But if we do right on the D-pad and down on the right stick, now they're all blitzing. So that is something that can be really powerful. I'd say mostly uh, that last option, right on the D-pad, down on the right stick, being able to, uh, in an instance, just blitz all your linebackers uh, is something that I will occasionally do. If, if the way someone is making their pre-snap adjustments, sometimes... Uh, you can tell they're, they're just flipping the run a couple times and you're very, very sure they're running, but you don't want to run commit because run commit is too risky. Because if you guess wrong, it's a free touchdown. A kind of uh, less risky run commit can be to blitz all your linebackers. And so, you know, just having the power just hit right on the D-pad, down on the right stick and just blitz all those guys immediately uh, is a really powerful tool to have situationally, of course, but that's just a really great tool to have. So that was the linebackers. So now we have covered uh, most of the options and in wire triangle, and we're still gonna come back to some of those. We have covered left on the D-pad, which is the defensive line adjustments. We have covered right on the D-pad, which is the linebacker adjustments. Up and down the D-pad don't do anything. Uh, left bumper doesn't do anything. Left trigger is just going to uh, you know zoom you out. Uh, same with right trigger. But if we press RB or R1, that is gonna bring up more adjustments for us and there's a lot of power right here as well um not so much on the left side like shifting the entire defense left or shifting the entire defense right uh is something you can do if you think that they're certainly running one direction or another uh you know spread the entire defense uh sometimes people will pinch the entire defense kind of as a another way of kind of using like show blitz except they think that maybe it could be a run up the middle uh, but I would say on the right side, the guess play options, this is really, really powerful. And this is something that you really want to be taking advantage of. Mostly, I would say up on the right stick, which is guess pass, also called pass commit. So if you are very sure that your opponent is passing the ball, you hit RB or R1 and up on the right stick. And even though you see nothing change on the screen, you are basically telling all your defenders we are assuming this is a pass and it's going to make them play a little bit better coverage because of that better man coverage better zone coverage just better coverage in general uh the downside is you are going to be more susceptible to giving up big runs if you guess wrong um which is why you don't want to use it every play but i would say especially this year uh where passing is a pretty popular thing to do it's it's the meta i think to be passing most of the time uh, I'm probably pass committing uh, on more than 50% of my plays. And you know, even if you pass commit and then run the ball, if you have a good user, uh, you can usually you know, maybe shoot a gap or something and bring them down for just a couple yard gain. Uh, pass committing is a pretty low risk in my opinion, so I would err on the side of doing it if you think there's a strong chance that they are gonna be passing. Now, the other options are for run commits. Run left, run middle, run right. This is where things get really uh, risky. And so I'm actually gonna run some plays for this. I'm gonna hit down on the right stick for run up the middle, and I'm gonna actually run this play on offense, and I am just gonna put X on a streak right here. 
but watch what happens when I run commit. The entire defense just came in. The entire defense just came in. Let's look at the replay. That is the risk of run committing. And kind of earlier, I alluded to it. If you think they might run, but you're not entirely sure, uh, maybe blitz all linebackers as a, a safer option. Because when you run commit, everybody's coming in. The entire defense came in to guard the run. And if your opponent you know, has any sense of awareness. Now, sometimes, and I've had this happen before, your opponent freaks out and just presses the first button that comes to mind and you actually can get an interception on it. I wouldn't recommend trying to get an interception that way, but it is possible. Uh, but any opponent who uh, knows what they're doing, uh, they see a run commit and, and it's a free touchdown. So that is why the only time you should run commit, I would say if it's fourth and one at the goal line and they're in goal line formation, uh, run committing might be a good idea. Obviously, they might pass it anyway, but it's a risk you're maybe willing to take uh, because you think there's such a high chance of them running the ball. But run commit is very risky. It's very powerful. As you can see, you are sending the house. If they ran a run play on this, uh, there was no chance of them getting any yards because you just sent all 11 defenders, maybe one guy on the right decided to play some coverage, but you sent basically the whole team in to guard the run. Uh, so it's very powerful when you use it correctly very risky if you use it incorrectly and then same thing with the run left and run right uh it's just a run commit but instead of up the middle it will be to a direction so i'll hit uh run left right here just so you guys can see it i'll hike it and uh it's basically the same thing they're just going to be uh favoring that left side a little bit more than up the middle i usually just run commit up the middle unless again i've got a really strong sense that they're going to be going one direction uh but again, these run commits, uh, very risky. Use them carefully. Uh, but that is, you know, all the options in the upper menus of when we're pressing RB or R1. On the bottom right, RB or R1 again. So basically double tapping. So RB, RB or R1, R1 is going to put our defensive line in QB contain. You see that? You see those two guys that instead of just blitzing, uh, it's going to change it to uh, these contain kind of things. QB contain does not work as well as it should. Uh, it works sometimes, but someone who likes to scramble outside the pocket a lot uh, is going to know how to block the QB contain. You can you can ID him as the mic. You can shift your line. Basically, you can make it so that the QB contain uh, does not really contain. I sometimes use it, but... I've had it not work enough times that I kind of don't bother anymore. If I need to deal with a scrambling quarterback, I more just kind of try to do it with QB spies and, you know, maybe putting DNs in hard flats and then sending them. But QB contain does not work as well as it should. It might work for you, especially if your opponent doesn't know how to block those guys. So give it a shot. RB, RB or R1, R1 for QB contain. But just don't be too surprised if your opponent is still able to scramble outside, turn that corner, and your DN does not contain like you want them to, because it just doesn't work the way that I wish it would. Now, option running back, option quarterback. That is something I never, ever really use. And honestly, I'll be completely honest. I don't know what it does. I guess in the event that your opponent is running a lot of option plays, I'm guessing it's saying, who do you want to focus on? Like if your opponent has a Michael Vick or a Lamar Jackson, what I'm assuming is that you're telling them that uh, you're telling your defenders that on an option play, focus on the quarterback or focus on the running back. I have never used it. I just, in our coaching adjustments, like we saw at the beginning, I put my option defense on conservative and that usually guards against the quarterback options pretty well. I also don't run into people running a ton of option reads. It's usually a pretty situational thing, but that is an option. <laughs> no pun intended. It is an option for you to use option quarterback or option running back if you really want to. If you guys have some experience with it and want to enlighten me, or if I was wrong about this, let me know, because I honestly don't know. I've never used those in my life of playing Madden, and things have worked out just fine. Okay, guys, so now we're going to go back to... Uh, finishing up the coverage adjustments uh, that I mentioned earlier. So there's actually going to be individual adjustments for telling your individual defender what coverage to play, but then there's also individual assignments against individual players 
on offense. So if we press A or X for individual, uh, you are basically going to give an assignment to the defensive player you're selected. So right now it's my safety Blackman. Uh, I pressed A or X for individual, and now we can select a player on the offense that we want to give him a special assignment for. So let's click on X, which is digs on the left side. And now I have all these options. I can uh, tell him to play backed off, shade left, shade right, or press. Now, obviously with him being the safety, uh, who's not manned up on him, uh, those top four options, back off, shade left, shade right, or press, aren't gonna really do a whole lot. But, and so real quick, I'll show you guys what that would mean. Uh, so for this guy who is manned up against digs, I could uh, do uh, Y and then A and then digs. And now I want just him to press. I can hit down the right stick and now he's gonna go press. So that's to show you guys what it does. But what I wanna go back to is, let's say I was controlling Blackman and we go back to the individual adjustments and I select digs. There's a fifth option at the bottom that says spotlight receiver. And what spotlight receiver is going to do is if Blackman was playing in a zone, which you know he's not, but let's let's uh, just put him in a little little hook curl right now. If we use spotlight receiver for Blackman on Diggs, then as Diggs comes into his zone, Blackman's gonna kind of pay special attention to Diggs. He's even gonna maybe run with him for a little bit, almost like man him up while he is in his zone. Now he's not gonna stay with him, he'll leave him as he continues on to the next zone. But that can be very situationally powerful if you know your opponent likes running a particular route. Like if I knew Diggs uh, was gonna be probably on a post because my opponent was running that all game, I might wanna put Blackman in this, uh, what would I do? Well, I just changed it. I might wanna put Blackman in this hook curl and spotlight Diggs to basically make sure that when Diggs comes close, that Blackman's really gonna guard him. Cause it's the most annoying thing ever. Like if Diggs runs a post in the Blackman zone, but Blackman stays like three yards behind him and gives up the easy catch underneath. Uh, Cause that's just how zone works in Madden 21. Uh, the zones don't work that great, but by spotlighting him, you know, you might be able to get a little bit better zone coverage out of your defenders. And so that is what the individual adjustments do. Uh, you can select anybody. It's going to be the same options. Very situational. I don't really use those. Uh, they're a little bit too specific for me. Uh, if you really wanted to back off an individual player or press an individual player, you could. Uh, for the most part, if I want to do that, I'm just pressing everybody or backing off everybody. Looks like Rhodes, Rhodes isn't interested in, in cooperating anymore. Um, that, that usually happens if you do too many adjustments. Uh, they'll, they'll start dummying out sometimes and, and not responding. But those were the individual assignments you can give to your defenders uh, relative to offensive players. Now let's look at just the individual assignments you can give to your individual defensive players uh, in terms of changing up their coverages and all that fun stuff. So what you can do with the player that you have selected on defense is if you press A, it's going to pull up another menu of eight different things that you can have them do. So on the left side, we have four different zone options. Uh, so I can put Blackman in a deep half, which is gonna look like that. I can put him in an inside third. I can put him in a curl flat and I can, whoa, curl flat. There's a curl flat. Uh, I can put him in a curl flat or I can put him on a hook curl like we did before. Now, since Blackman is a safety, he is gonna get a little bit different options uh, when I press A for his zone coverages than say a cornerback or a linebacker or something. So if I come over to Rhodes right here and I press A, you can see we have different options. Now, if I push up on the left stick, that's gonna give me an outside third. If I go left, it's gonna put me in a hard flat. If I go right on the left stick, it's gonna be a soft squat. If I go down, it's gonna be a cloud flat. And real quick guys, if you don't know the differences between these blues, uh, a hard flat is going to just play the flat as the name would imply. A cloud flat will start off short in the flat, but it will drop deeper if no one is in that zone. And then a soft squat will actually man up, or soft squat? A soft squat will actually man up the receiver deep unless someone else comes back into his zone underneath. Uh, so soft squats are pretty unique. You know, soft squats in like a Tampa two or something, 
can actually be really powerful because some people will put streaks on the outside to try and beat Tampa 2. But if they're not putting someone on a short route underneath to pull that soft squat back down, that soft squat will play man coverage on that streak all the way down the field. And some people may say, well, what the heck? Why is this guy's Tampa 2? Why is his short blue going deep with my guy? It's probably because it's a soft squat. So just understanding the differences between those blues can also be really powerful. But as you can see, there's different options between cornerbacks and safeties. And it only makes sense that if we look at a linebacker, they're also going to get different options. So we have hard flat again uh, for our linebacker. We or I put him in a soft squat. I put him in a soft squat. We have soft squats. We have vertical hooks. We have uh, curl flats and we have seam flats. My understanding is that curl flats are true zones. So this curl flat will just play uh, the zone. And especially if you have a custom drop depth set, he's just going to drop to that depth. Whereas a seam flat is kind of more of a man matching zone, if that makes any sense. So it is a zone, but then once someone comes into his zone, uh, he will man them up. That's kind of what's happening on a cover three match. Uh, that's, that's what would distinguish a cover three sky which is probably gonna have curl flats from a cover three match, which should have seam flats, is that the cover three match will have these man matching zones, whereas the cover three sky or just regular cover three uh, will just be a true zone. They're just gonna sit in their zone. They're not gonna do any man matching or anything like that. But the final group to look at is the defensive linemen, and they can get the exact same adjustments uh, for zones as the linebackers. And so a very common thing uh, that you may see, uh, it's called double mabling, is so let's take this D lineman and put him in a hard flat. And so now we've got a purple zone on the left and a blue zone on the left. And now this is like a, a D tackle who's gonna be going out there. But if I hike the ball, uh, you can see that we had two guys dropping on zones right there. And they, they were playing kind of close together. Uh, I can't remember what I set my drop depths to. Uh, also, uh, the, the D lineman's not gonna have great zone coverage, uh, but that is an option. If you want to play max coverage sometimes, you can you can take your uh, D lineman and just use your quick adjustments and put them out into hard flats and say, I'm just gonna drop everyone in coverage and you know make you make the read. So those are all the zones, but if you remember, there were also four more options for every single player. So if I go back to Blackman again and hit A, on the right side for these assignments, uh, we can put him in man coverage, we can put him on an inside quarter, which is actually just another zone uh, that they didn't have space for on the left side. We can put him in a QB spy, which is right on the left stick, and we can put him on a blitz, which is down on the right stick. And a little tip for you guys is whoever you're using, you want to be putting on a blitz. And that's just because during the play, uh, they're gonna get better change of direction, like much better change of direction and turn radius uh, when they're in a blitz versus if they're in a zone or even a QB spy. I used to do a QB spy, uh, but the reality is that being in a blitz is uh, the best movement possible for your user. So always have them on a blitz. And obviously, uh, you know, we, I don't even talk about what a QB spy does. If you got, I mean, a QB spy is literally just gonna spy the quarterback, just kind of hover a couple yards off the line of scrimmage and move with the quarterback left and right as he moves around behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, man coverage, guys. So that was the first option on the right side, uh, up on the right stick. If I press up on the right stick, it's now going to bring up uh, all these offensive player icons again. So I'm basically gonna choose who do I want Blackman to man up. So I can go ahead and press Y, and now Blackman is manned up on the running back. If I want to double team digs, which Double teaming doesn't really work very well in Madden 21, but I could uh, press A up on the right stick and press X for digs, and now he's man up on digs. A more useful thing uh, would probably be to do what's called cross manning. And so let's say that my opponent has been doing lots of uh, drags and crossers with his two outside wide receivers, is uh, we can take our safeties and man them up on the receiver on the opposite side. So maybe I will take Blackman and man him up on the B receiver on the right side. And then I'll take this safety out here and man him up on digs. And so now they are cross manned. And so, and then, you know, obviously A is not covered. Uh, maybe if I was, you know, usering, uh, you know, this guy right here, 
uh, which, you know, I probably wouldn't do. I prefer to uh, use or someone as a safety. Oh, hooker is a safety. That's right. We put a safety in there. So yeah, I'd probably be user and hooker. Uh, I would probably just make sure that I cover A uh, at least for a couple seconds off the line because he doesn't have anyone manned up on him right now. Uh, but, but yeah, that's cross manning. Uh, and that can be very, very powerful against, uh, you know, people running drags and slants and crossers and stuff like that. Obviously, in this case, uh, maybe I wouldn't want to uh, have a second guy in man coverage right here. Maybe I just want to put him uh, on an outside third, just have him drop straight back in the event uh, that Diggs just runs straight. Because obviously, if Diggs is just on a go, uh, the guy, you know, the safety over here uh, is not going to cover Diggs if he just runs a go. And same thing this side on the user. Uh, you really are, you're going to want to check and make sure that B isn't just running a streak or actually it looks like uh, this guy's also manned up on B, so maybe I just put him back as well. And now we are cross manned, and they can't run streaks with the outside wide receivers because we got the deep blues. And in the middle, I would just take hooker, uh, make sure that A uh, does not, you know, come open immediately, and then just kind of lurk in the middle of the field. Uh, so as you guys can see, look how much we can do with defensive adjustments. Now you may be saying, how am I going to? Uh, you know, click all over to these different guys. I gotta come over here, click A and uh, make his adjustments and then click down here and click A for his adjustments. And by the way, guys, some of you are still pressing B or circle to cycle through everybody like this. If you just press B or circle and point in the direction you wanna go, you can, you can automatically switch to whichever guy you want down to the D line, go to the corner on the right. We can go up to the safety and go all the way over and all the way back. Uh, get used to doing this. I know it's super simple, uh, but I know there's some of you out there who will literally just spam B or circle to click all the way through each person. And really, you should just be using the left stick to, to click around to whoever you want. But even though you can click around to different people, this is not the fastest way to put lots of adjustments on. And this is where quick adjustments is going to come in. So let's say I want to make sure that I am a uh, user hooker and I'm concerned about, well, if I want to go make an adjustment on roads, but if I click over here and press A and put them on his adjustments, what if they snap it while I'm on roads? Uh, you can use quick adjustments to always be on your user while giving other players their assignments. So what we're going to do is we're just going to double tap wire triangle. And really what we're doing is we're pressing wire triangle to pull up coverage adjustments. And the Y option down there that we mentioned way at the beginning is the quick adjust. So what quick adjust does is it pulls up all our defender icons. So let's say I wanna give Rhodes an assignment, but I don't wanna click over to him. What I can do is I can double tap wire triangle and then press X for Rhodes. And then let's say I wanna put him on a, uh, I don't know, cloud flat or something. I think we already have a blue out there, but that's okay. We got double cloud flats now. But you saw I put an adjustment on him without leaving my user at all. So let's say I want to put him back on the outside third, double tap Y or triangle, press X for roads, put up on the left stick. And now he's back in his deep third and I never had to click off my user. So there's no risk of accidentally being caught where I was over here trying to make his adjustments and all of a sudden they snapped the ball. And so definitely get used to using quick adjustments and it's not just a uh, Y or triangle. The Y, you know, y and triangle double tapping it will bring up all your secondary, but you can do this for linebackers and defensive linemen as well. If you double tap uh, right on the D-pad, now you've got your linebacker adjustment. So I can take uh, my two linebackers and just put them both on curl flats. And now they're both on curl flats. Or I want to uh, put them both on QB spies. It's that quick that we can do it just like that. Same thing for the defensive linemen. We can double tap left on the D-pad. And now we're gonna pull up those three icons. And let's say we just want to spy everybody. Now, now they're all on spies. Look how quick that was. And I never had to leave my user. Or I just want to drop them all back into, into zones. You know, we can do that. We can drop everyone into zones. And actually, what I forgot to mention is it looks like the defensive tackle gets different zones than the defensive ends. So on the defensive tackle, his four zones are actually vert hook left vert hook right and it's very uh tough to see but it's the yellow zone right here look vert hook left was up on the left stick vert, vert hook right was uh down on the left stick and then hook curl left was left on the left stick and hook curl right was right on the left stick 
Uh, and so the defensive tackles even have different adjustments than the defensive ends. But guys, there's so much power right here. Now let's let's clean this up a little bit. Let's just switch to a cover three buzz. So now it's a well. Let's just uh, you know, let's just just run a play and reset everything because uh, sometimes sometimes things just get really funky. Uh, but let's let's mess around with this. Let's go to say a cover three buzz. And so now here's our cover three. Something that I do very commonly if I am playing against a scrambling quarterback uh, and I've been sending a lot of pressure. Uh, I want my defense to come out looking exactly the same like I always do. Uh, you know, the adjustment I do for every play is I press, shade over top, I uh, shift my D-line to the left, and I slant them outside, and then I kind of take this user, put him on a blitz, and kind of you know get right here, ready to shoot the gap, because a lot of times I'm running Mike Blitz Zero for the user rush. So to the defense, it looks like I'm ready to do the user rush, but really, I'm sitting in a cover three. Uh, but if I want max coverage, like complete max coverage, what I can do right here is I can uh, go ahead and get some extra zones on the field. So I can uh, double tap left on the D-pad to pull up my D-line adjustments, select A, and do left on the left stick, and now he's in a hard flat. And then I can do double tap right on the D-pad, select X for my linebacker on the left side, do left on the left stick, and now he is in a hard flat. And then I can double tap left on the D-pad, pull up my D-lineman again, take X and do right on the right stick. And now he's in a QB spy. And so now all of a sudden, even though uh, without seeing the play art, it looks like I am ready to shoot this gap again you know, with my user rush and send in the house. In reality, we are, <laughs> we are dropping uh, 10 people back into coverage because I'm just going to swoop in and then come back and user. Uh, we are literally only rushing one now. Don't always do this uh, it's very situational but it can really throw some people off especially uh if they're you know blocking their running back uh maybe they'll motion block a receiver or something they're gonna maybe block extra because i've been sending the house so much and all of a sudden uh they have three receivers going into all this coverage uh you can do all this with quick adjustments you know especially you know in this case the stuff uh with the hard flats and the spy but Again, guys, there's so much here. It's so deep. I know this is a long video, but I really felt it was all necessary to show you all the different things you can do on defense. Just how massive the the tool belt is at your disposal for customizing uh, each assignment on the field and exactly how you want to play your defense. And this is these are things that I need to get better at using as well. Uh, the best players in the world know how to capitalize on all of these different adjustments, use them to the very best of their ability, and again, anticipating what their opponent's gonna be doing. Again, I can tell you like, yeah, I do this sometimes, but if you ran this every play, you'd have a, a bad time because then they'd just start running the ball on you. Eventually they would figure out the weaknesses in the zone. So like I said at the beginning, I can't tell you guys what defense to run, but I hope that this video shows you how you can manipulate your defense to adjust to what your opponent is doing because that ultimately is the sport of football. It's a game of chess on a football field where you are trying to outsmart your opponents. You're trying to adjust their tendencies. And the one time you guess correctly because you made the correct adjustments and you learned from their tendencies, you're gonna feel like a defensive genius. It's all gonna be because you learned how to put quick adjustments and different adjustments across the field on your defensive players. So anyway, guys, that is the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, please like, comment, and subscribe. It helps the channel so much. Also, if you want to come hang out uh, for one of my Twitch streams sometimes, I stream four nights a week over at twitch.tv slash TV. Come say hi. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, then we can just chat about football and life or whatever you want. It, it's always a fun time over there. So again, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.